Hey everyone, this is Scott at Sligo, and I'm going to do a video today um, where we use OpenAI's custom GPTs and Sligo's iPaaS to build uh, an AI-powered conversational chatbot that knows everything about Sligo's products. Um, I did two similar videos last year uh, where we used Slack as a front end for employees at Soligo to ask questions about our product. Um, but now with OpenAI's custom GPTs, we can do something entirely better where um, users can ask questions in ChatGPT directly uh, and ChatGPT will intelligently know when it needs to go find information um, from Soligo's knowledge base um, to serve up answers back to the user. One other really cool thing about custom GPTs is that you can publish them um, to the public, which the GPT we're gonna look at today, I've done. Anyone out there with a ChatGPT account can find this custom GPT and use it. Um, or you can build private custom GPTs for um, employees within your org um, to use and you know you would do that when they're interacting with data sources that you don't want out there um, for the public to see okay so you know what is a custom GPT we're gonna uh, deep dive into that um, and so I think the first thing to do is to just look through a, um, a sample chat that I've done with my custom GPT so again uh, the name of our custom GPT is Sligo GPT. You can find this um, in OpenAI's marketplace, and um, and you just click on it to say start a chat. And then I, you know I asked the question, you know, what's the best way to export data from Google Sheets? And it went out and found an article um, using that as a query vector, um, and then it answered that question based on the article that it found. Um, I can ask follow-up questions that relate to the same article where it doesn't have to go back out and get any more info. Um, so here I ask, well, what if I want to import data into Google Sheets? How do I do that? And it came back with a very specific answer on how to do that in our product. Um, then I decided, you know, let's change to a completely different topic. You know, does Soligo have a connector for OpenAI? Um, so then it goes back out and asks another question because it doesn't know the answer to that. Um, it makes another request to our knowledge base, gets the right article, and is able to then answer that question. Uh, and then I asked a follow up on that topic. Well, okay, great, you have a connector. How do I set up a connection? And it spit out the steps. Um, so, so really powerful. Uh, I can ask any question about Soligo's product. OpenAI will intelligently know when it needs to call our knowledge base um, to get the article that it needs to answer the question. Um, and then it'll use the article to answer the very specific question that the user asked. Okay, so now, how do you build a custom GPT? So now I'm gonna deep dive into um, the build process for creating these things. Um, so I'm gonna go over here into the top left and I'm gonna click Edit GPT. And I always go to the, so you can actually use conversational AI to build it. Um, if you want, or you can configure it. I always do a configuration. Um, here, I just gave it our logo. Uh, I named it Soligo GPT. Description, so I describe the purpose of this custom GPT. It's to ask questions about Soligo's iPaaS. Um, I also, uh, we're not, we're not gonna demo this, but I also added support for signing up for an account from this GPT directly. Um, and then I left some room for building more stuff out in the future. The instructions are where you pre-build the prompts that the AI needs to be able to do the task that you want it to do. So here I have, a I'm telling it basically, use the action, find KB articles in Pinecone to retrieve information from Soligo's knowledge base and then use the response from the action to answer the question by the user. Uh, do your best to send the, the latest relevant questions based on the current state of the chat with the user. Uh, in the response back to the user, always output the URL field so the user can read more if they want. So this is a really key detail. Um, I want the chat 
AI to always give back links to the articles that it used to answer the question so that users can click those articles and you know validate that the answer was correct. AI does still hallucinate um, or just read more on a topic um, if they want. And then you'll see the second one. Again, I'm not going to demo this, but um, I created a second action called sign up for a new IO account in, in North America. So if you were to chat, hey, sign me up, um, you know, it'll actually go and sign you up and ask you for the fields. And that's a pretty cool interaction as well. Um, you can add in some conversational starters just to give users a sense of what they can ask. Uh, you know, again, uh, we started that. Uh, what is the best way to export data from Google Sheets or sign me up for an account? Um, you can upload files directly um, to use as knowledge, but here there are limits. So they only allow a certain number of files if you do it here. Um, and definitely nowhere near the like so I think the limit was like 10, 20 um, certain size limits as well. You know, we have thousands of Zendesk articles that we use in our to in our knowledge base. Um, and I want to make all of those available. So this was not a fit for powering this type of bot. Uh, that all said, I imagine in the future that OpenAI will expand this right here, this functionality um, to support lots of files where they do the vector store for you. They're already doing that in their beta version of their assistance API. Um, and it's just a matter of time before they allow you to do it here. There are still pros and cons of using their vector store versus an external vector store um, like Pinecone. Um, the kind of the, the high level, you know, the pro is that, you know, if you use them, it's very easy. You just sync the files to them uh, and they do everything. The con is that you lose control over how you source the articles, how you chunk them up um, and serve them to the AI. Whereas when you sync them to Pinecone and then get them from Pinecone, you have total control over how you do that. Um, you can give it the capabilities that you want. So I don't want any web browsing. I, I don't want any, there's no need for image generation. Um, and then I do have code interpreter here because our product allows you to write JavaScript. And we sometimes have JavaScript snippets in our knowledge base articles. So I wanted the AI to be able to use those, see those, spit out code snippets and so on. Um, and so that was the only tool that I wanted to give it access to. And then finally, and this is really where iPass ties in, um, is the actions. So, you know, up here again, I said, use the action, find KB articles in Pinecone um, to retrieve information. So when the user is asking a question, the AI says, okay, I got to use this action called find KB articles in Pinecone um, to help answer the question. And so let's go look at now, what do those actions look like? Okay, so first of all, you need an authentication um, to the API that is going to be um, processing the actions. And here I have um, a bearer token uh, to the integrator IO API, which we'll look at um, soon here. But just note there the you're using a, um, you're using just standard API bearer tokens, which are supported by integrator IO. Um, and then you're plugging the key in here so that it can communicate with integrator IO. And then what you're putting in here is an open API spec um, that defines the API that serves the request. You know, you're saying, well, what is the API? Um, let me go to the one down here for, okay, so here's the API, like search for product knowledge base articles um, to help answer questions give it a summary description, um, an operation ID, and then you give it the path to invoke that API, um, um, and then all the details of that API, the fields that you send, the response fields that you get back. And I'm gonna show you, um, it's really easy to generate this. Um, this, this is like kind of overwhelming um, when you first come to do this, but I'll show you a real quick hack um, that makes it very easy to um, build the open API spec uh, to power your action uh, for the custom GPT to invoke. Um, and then, so again, you can just see the actions, you can test them here. Uh, and then you, if you wanna make it public, you gotta put in a privacy policy. So, policy. so I put in Sligo's privacy policy 
Um, for internal ones, you don't need to do that. Okay, so high level, um, let me go back. Um, custom GPT, you're just pre-configuring -config the prompts, the description, the instructions, the starters, and then you're defining the actions that the AI can then invoke based on what the user is telling it to do or asking it. Um, and then the actions are just APIs that are hosted in your integrator IO account, in your iPass. Um, and, um, and then they're gonna give back the content uh, that, it, that the AI will use to then answer the question. Okay, so now, um, what I'm gonna do now is jump over into my integrator IO account where I'm hosting the APIs that define the actions. Okay, so over here um, in Soligo, so here again, here's our, here's our Soligo account that we use at Soligo internally. Um, and then on the left nav, there is a resources section and there's something called My APIs. So My APIs is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you define your APIs. And um, I have three here that, we, that we've built at Soligo. Um, and the one that I'm gonna drill into is find matches in Pinecone for public custom GPTs. So I have another one for private custom GPTs. So I have two APIs that I built. Um, I separated the public from pri private because that's always the best practice from a security standpoint. Um, if you're building custom GPTs that only your org should be able to see, the APIs that serve them should also be separated from the APIs that serve public GPTs. You don't want to have cross-pollination on, on accident. So um, defining an API is very easy. Um, you give it a name and then you say it's all implemented in JavaScript. Um, you say what is the function name that you want to implement the API itself, um, it will give you a URL that you then plug back into um, OpenAI, and, um, and that's it. So now let's go look at the script real quick. So here is like your little developer interface for building your JavaScript that serves the API. Um, I'm going to just uh, click over here real quick and insert the stub. So if you wanna see like what does the stub look like, um, you just get an options argument that has the method, headers, query string, body, raw body, uh, and then you return back the API response. So, so really straightforward, if you've ever built an API, you know, you get requests and you return responses, and in the request, here's all the stuff that comes through over HTTP, and you just need to now do something with that. Okay, so now, um, in my specific script, so I'm gonna go through some of the details here of what I'm doing. So I'm importing a module called IO API. So inside the functions, uh, sorry, inside your JavaScript um, functions, you can call um, a module that then has access to all of the APIs available inside your integrator IO account. So a really powerful module that lets you like call back into integrator IO's APIs. So it's like you're building an API that can then call Integrator IO's native APIs. And then because Integrator IO is an iPass, um, you know, you can then call anything that Integrator IO is connected to to do any tasks that you've built out. Okay, so so let's go into like, well, what am I doing in my find matches from Pinecone? So again, in Pinecone, that's my vector database. I have all of all our knowledge articles in there. Um, and so when a request comes in to like find, um, to find relevant articles from a user query, um, it does some validation, uh, which you should always do just to, to make sure that you're getting the right inputs. Um, and then I do what's called running a virtual import first. So the first thing I do is I take the question that the user gave um, and this comes from the AI. So the user types a question, the AI then gets the question, sends it to us in the input um, in a field called text for query vector. I take that text and I send it to OpenAI and I create an embedding for the question itself. So I'm doing that um, conversion, the text into uh, an embedding 
so that I can then after I so that I can then query my vector database um, using a second API call called run virtual export. Um, and I, I search now for my in my vector database for matching um, entries from the embedding. And I'm asking for like three back. I have thresholds on, you know, scores. Um, I want to know how many tokens came back and so on. But basically, I'm just calling Pinecone um, and getting back the top matches based on an embedding search uh, from the question. Um, and then I like tidy up the match the the matches. Um, I return the URLs, uh, and then and then that's it. Put it into an array. I log it um, so I can debug my script if needed, and then um, I return that back to OpenAI. So to recap, um, building an API in Soligo is very easy. Uh, it's just JavaScript. Um, you get a request object, you return a response, and then in the function itself, you can call anything um, that Sligo Integrator I.O. can do. Um, virtual imports, virtual exports are great for you know, sending data into apps, getting data out of apps, uh, and so on. And you can also use ChatGPT to build these scripts as well. So if you're not really good with JavaScript, um, you know, I do this all the time, even though I'm good with JavaScript, I'm lazy now. Uh, I just provide a ChatGPT the stub and I say what I want it to do uh, and it'll give you the code um, to do what you want to do. Okay, so, so that is the custom API um, that I built to find matches in Pinecone that then serve back to um, ChatGPT. And, you know, I talked about um, you know, what's a hack for building that open API spec? Because so you built the API, now you got to build the open API spec, which is tedious. Um, so my advice for that is, again, use ChatGPT to do that. So, you know, you can, once you have the API, you can use Postman to test it out. Uh, so what I did is I just created um, some post requests um, with a sample payload. I got back the response, and then I would go over to ChatGPT and, um, let me go here and just in a brand new chat say, hey, here's my sample uh, API request. Here's my sample API response. Build an open API spec for me in JSON format and it'll give you the, the open API spec that you need um, to plug into your action in this schema field right here. So that was all I did. I just used ChatGPT again to do this, this step right here based on simple postman requests and responses that I need to do anyway because I want to test my API out. Um, okay, so um, I think the last thing I want to cover um, in this video is, um, is, it's a recap a little bit from the last video I did, but again, you, we, we looked at how to serve the API requests um, how to build a custom GPT, but you know, how do you get the articles themselves into um, Pinecone? You know, that, that is just a flow that we built um, called ingest Zendesk articles to Pinecone. We also have other flows where we're doing Google Docs, Slack conversations. Um, I think there's also um, Zendesk support tickets and uh, Confluence pages um, being done in other places in this tile over here on the left. Um, but these are very simple flows. It's just, you know, every day we run this, we get the most recently updated Help Center articles from Zendesk. We create an embedding for it, uh, and then we upsert those embeddings into uh, Pinecone. And so every day, Pinecone is kind of refreshed with the latest changes from our knowledge base. So it always has the latest articles, the latest knowledge information, um, and then the the custom GPT is just, again, invoking this custom API that I built that is finding those articles, serving the content back to ChatGPT for the purpose of, um, you know, of answering questions for users. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, so again, super powerful um, um, chatbot that you can now build directly in OpenAI for people to interact directly from this interface, taking advantage of all the cool things that um, ChatGPT gives us. You know, they can spit out code snippets. Um, you know, they can do a lot of stuff, give you files to download. It's really powerful. And now you can do um, knowledge bots um, directly there. Okay, 
Um, that's it. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for listening.